Welcome back to the course. In this part, we're going to be covering some ideas on effective note taking, uh, some software that you can actually use to kind of take those notes and kind of create this little uh, vault of knowledge that you can always return back to and kind of brush up when you need to. Now, the software that I personally use is Obsidian. I've seen a few different types or a few other types of software for game development that people kind of use. Obsidian is something that I've always felt is the best for one note taking and two game development. Now, I'm going to show you one of my vaults that I created a long time ago. This is actually my YouTube vault. This is where I store a lot of the code and stuff that I use for a lot of the videos that I do. Uh, in this case, like these are some of the scripts and stuff for my videos. This specific one right here is for the complex player controller that I plan on creating in the future, which we will also cover in this course. Uh, this involves uh, state machines, uh, a lot of how and why it works. It's just one of those places where I can sit there, look at it and go, oh, yep, I remember this and I can actually redesign it. Now, I want to teach you how to make something like this and a really good form of note taking that will actually allow you to kind of retain a lot of this knowledge and on knowledge that you cannot retain too easily, it'll allow you to come back to it and view it in your own words. That is a very powerful thing. Having the ability to view something in your own words, very, very strong. The truth is I could just give you I could, you could download Obsidian, I could give you what, a vault that has an entire glossary or pretty much every concept you'll want to learn or be learning in this course. Truth is, writing it yourself or typing it out yourself is far more effective when it comes to kind of retaining that information. Now, the more effective way, of course, would actually be physically writing it down. It create, helps create neuropathways in our brains that allow us to actually retain that information easier. But for this, we, we can just use uh, Obsidian. Now, one of the other best parts about Obsidian is it comes with uh, community-based plugins. Now, if I go down to the settings here and I go into community plugins and I turn them on and I click browse, up here I can write down Kanban, uh, Kanban boards. Kanban boards, what we've got to do is install it, uh, enable it, close it, make sure that it's toggled on. Now, I'm going to very quickly create a Kanban board right here. A Kanban board is what you would see on websites like Trello. Uh, Trello is a Kanban board website. So what you can do with this is create a uh, certain, here, I'll just do one, two, three, and four. These are the stages of development, right? These are notes, to do, in progress, finished, and you can have a few more for like bugs and other things. It just allows you to e easily organize your next steps and keep things jotted down. This is what I use for actually developing games. Now, let's actually go and get this installed. The link for Obsidian will be in the description as usual. I've already got the website nice and open here for us. All you're going to have to do is get Obsidian. Now, if this doesn't pop up with your specific version, say you're on Mac or something, you can click more platforms and you can scroll down and you can pick whichever one you want to use. For me, I use Obsidian. All you have to do is click this, uh, go through the installation process. It's very simple. It's just a few button clicks. Uh, Whilst you do that, we can have a quick scroll through here. Uh, your thoughts are yours. This is all a, kind of a good description of how Obsidian kind of functions, how it works. It has a lot of really cool details and things in it. Like you can create links, which is something we will actually be doing. Uh, some graph visualizations so you can see the connections between certain things. Something I make a lot of use of when it comes to actually designing games and designing mechanics within those games. Now, easiest way that I can say this is... Uh, probably by showing you. So by now I'm going to assume that you have this downloaded. You have gone, clicked the button, gone up here, downloaded and installed it. And with it installed, you should be, when you open it at least, you should open to this page. So you probably won't have anything up here, that's fine. These are where your vaults or previously open vaults will be. If there's nothing up here, that's good. Now, all you have to do is hit create to create a new vault. You'll name it. For this, I'm going to suggest you name it the Godot 4 Vault. So we'll just you can even name it Godot 4 Vault, like so. Now, the Godot 4 Vault is where we're going to be storing all of the information that we actually learn in this course and kind of layering it out like a glossary. Now, you have to browse and find a location. For now, I'm going to go and put it in uh, this video vault folder, which is where all of my vaults for my videos tend to be. So I can just select the folder, then I can hit create, and it'll open you up to this page. Now, another really useful thing about Obsidian 
is you can actually have multiple vaults open at once. So here I have two separate vaults open. What are vaults? Vaults are kind of what their name says. They are places where you store something, right? In this case, you're going to store a lot of information. Now, let's create a new folder. That's what this icon up here is the new folder button. This is the new note button. We're going to call this folder the glossary. Now, the glossary is going to have one note inside of it, and that note is going to just be called the glossary note. Why do we have a folder and a specific note for this? That's usually because what I do is I will put a number in front of this, like one point glossary, and then I will do one more for zero point etc. So we start getting this kind of layout or this uh, file structure type system that kind of allows things to be stored a lot simpler and easier. Now the etc folder for me, I will usually right click and then set as an attachment folder. What this will do is any pictures or anything like that that you drag into Obsidian, which by the way you can do, you can literally just click and drag from Google into Obsidian or store anything you really want on this. Any attachments like pictures, videos, will be stored in this ETC folder. That way it's all nice and organized. Now, for the glossary, one thing that you can do with this is this is all markdown text. If you know what markdown text is, congratulations. If you do not, markdown text allows you to do certain things, like, for instance, numbered lists. If I do one and then a full stop and then I press space, you'll see it's now grayed out. Now, if I type a letter or a number or a string or anything and then press enter, it will start creating a massive list for me. Now I can also press tab to indent these lists. Uh, you can create normal bullet points by just doing a full stop and a space. Sorry, not a full stop, a uh, dash and a space. That's a bullet point list for you. So you can do this. If you want to uh, keep something in mind, you can do a dash. So dash space and then square brackets, put a space in between those square brackets and then a space after them and you will get checkboxes, which are extremely useful. Now, there are a lot of different things you can do for this. One thing, other thing that I actually always like to remind people of when it comes to using the software is code blocks. Now, if you press the back tick key button, key button, button on your keyboard three times, so one, two, three, you'll notice that it opens up this kind of gray box. Now, you can actually give this a, uh, a name of a language, a coding language that you want to use afterwards. So let's go and do Python. Python is the one that I primarily use for creating what this is called as a code block. So in here, you can actually store your code and it will highlight it for you within that language. GDScript doesn't have an add-on or this doesn't have the GDScript language. I use Python for that primarily because they're quite similar. Now that's that created and we kind of understand some real basics about how to kind of type out our code and well not type out our code, store our information and how to uh, format a lot of our writing, right? Now, this is going to pretty much be empty because we're going to create a new folder and this is just going to be called, we'll call it two point notes. Now, what I'm going to want you to do throughout this course is right click in this folder, create a new note for something that you want to take a note of. So in this case, let's say an int, right? What an integer is, we could write int Let's give it a capital, so int dash integer, so we know exactly what we're talking about, and then we will write what that is. And int or integer is a whole number. So cool, we now know what an int or an integer is, and it's stored here. Now what you can do is go back up to your glossary, and you can drag this file in, and you can start storing things in one big page. You can even put like store these as lists as well, like so. So next we could uh, create a new note in our notes. We could call it float dash floating point number. And then we can just write a float is a floating point number. Uh, just to make sure we know what we mean by that, we can give a few examples. We can go like indentness to make it easier. 1.2, 5.8, etc., etc., right? And then, of course, you can right click and uh, 
give yourself a dictionary, trust me, that saves my uh, life quite a bit. And then we go back to the glossary, we throw it in here, and now we have integers and floats already marked down for us, and we can just come back to this. I can, can now completely forget what an integer or a float is, and then one day I'll go, oh, I need to use something to do with numbers, let's go look at my glossary, ah, int, float, floating point number, integer, let's click on this, oh, that's what that is. Now, you don't just have to store tiny single sentences in this. You can store entire code blocks in this. Meaning, if I show you how to design a certain script as we go, to say, uh, somebody pointed out health handlers and damage handlers in a uh, comment before. If I show you how to create a health handler and a damage handler, you can link them together. And basically, you can put down the entire script for the health handler. And then at the very bottom, you can do links to... And then you can just grab the script that it will link with, and like that. Now, what does this do? Well, if we go to the graph view, you can now see here that there are these lines connecting these things together. So the glossary is connected to the float and the int because these two are stored within our glossary as links. But now because we have created that link between integers and floats, they are now linked together in our brain as well. That's actually why we tend to call this quite a bit as a brain, because this kind of starts to form a little secondary brain for us. Now, with those kind of set up and sorted, you are actually ready to take notes. The truth is, I could sit here and make an entire three-hour video on how I specifically take notes, how I build out mini graphs and glossaries for games and game design. And you never know, that might actually come quite far, uh, quite further in the future when I uh, run out of ideas or people ask for it enough, I suppose. The truth is, when it comes to what you want to learn, you want to create notes like this as a glossary. You could add uh, tags to it if you really want to. So you could use the hashtag symbol and then a space, not space, sorry, just a hashtag symbol and then put a little word after it. In this case, I'll just put tag. Then you can click on that and it'll search for everything under this specific tag up in the uh, search bar here. So if I had a tag for numbers. Yeah, let's go and do that real quick. Let's go into our files, float. I'm going to add a tag. I'm going to go number. I'm not going to spell number correctly. There we go, I'm going to go number. Now I'm going to copy this, paste it in at the top here of the uh, integer, go into our glossary, I then Right here, I can just type in number and I can click on it and it'll pop up with where these things are tagged from. So floats are numbers, integers are numbers. If you want to uh, not have to click on it like this, you can just type this out. You can just write tag colon and it'll pop up with a list of all of your tags so you can easily search through it. Now, this is how I take notes. And trust me when I say this, this is one of the best ways you can take notes because it just stores everything for you. The amount of times I have forgotten how to do uh, certain types of vector math, for instance, there is a specific, actually even better, there is a specific script that I use or a specific line of code that I use to kind of remove what's known as the delta time variable and replace it with an actual mathematical variable that I can kind of use anywhere. Now that's not entirely necessary. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. There is a reason why I do that and we will kind of get into that as we go through the course. But because it's a mathematical, basically because it's a long sum of numbers and equations, like it's just a massive mathematical equation in my head. It's not actually that big, it's quite small, but it's one of those things where I have so much to do every day, I will forget it sometimes. So it's always nice to have it stored so I can come back to it and go, oh yeah, that's how I do it. Now. With this said, as we go through the course, I want you to build a glossary like this in your own words. Now, one thing when it comes to note taking that is very kind of not really taught to us is that when somebody says to you, take notes on what's important, your brain immediately goes, well, everything's important because you're explaining it to me. Or in this case, or some cases, nothing is important because I, I understand what could be important. Instead of doing this, I want you to pick out keywords. I want you to go, okay, uh, we're learning about integers, we're learning about floats. And then I just want you to create a note about those things and how you would explain it. If you were teaching it, how would you explain it? 
that really teaches us how to uh, kind of retain that information. And trust me when I say this, teaching helps you learn faster. So even if you're not going to teach, write it how you would teach it to someone else. Now, that's literally it. That's how I take notes. That is, uh, this is the software that I will be using as we go through the course to take notes on certain things. I already use it for a lot of things in general. Uh, yeah, so the next episode or next video, we'll be getting into a lot of the editor stuff in Godot. We'll actually be launching it. We'll be creating our first project and we'll be learning about a little bit about how the editor functions, a lot of the kind of intricacies in it and things that we will actually want to take note of. Uh, so yeah, I will actually be seeing you then. Thank you for watching.